We're in our garage and test facility. Let's see what we're rolling out today. But you already know. We had the 2022 Cadillac Blackwing with the supercharged V6 a couple weeks ago. 472 horses, six speed manual. Very nice vehicle, but we wanted more power. Ask Cadillac to send us something a bit more potent. And here it is, a CT5 Blackwing. The CT5 emblem is a clue as well. And on the rear, these Michelin Pilot Sport tires, 305-30 ZR19. Another tip-off, this is the V8 model. Back of the biggest tip-off is when you look under the hood, your 6.2 liter V8, 668 horsepower, 659 pounds-feet of torque. Can't complain about that. Fuel economy is clean B13 MPG in the city. <laughs> That's not too good, but 21 on the highway, that sounds better. We're going to take this in the real world and tell you what the real numbers are. And these engines are handmade. And the person who did the craftsmanship puts a little label on there to tell you who it is. Kathy Walker. Well, if I blow this up, I'm going to know who to blame. We're not going to do a complete bumper-to-bumper -bumper review on this. I'm sure you've seen other YouTube videos that cover that stuff. We're going to review the things they missed. For example, is there a spare tire in the trunk? For the charging, you would think so. Number two, how much does it cost? What options are worth it and what's not? An automatic transmission versus manual, which one should you really get? Well, you really don't want to put the steering in the sport mode. We'll cover that later when we're driving. And the biggest question of all, why the V6 CT4 Blackwing might be a better choice than the CT5 V8. Depending on the driving you're doing, we'll cover that too. All right, let's start by looking at the price tag and see how much coin we're going to shell out for this thing. All right, base price, $83,995. It's definitely a good bargain considering all the standard equipment we're getting. However, $6,000 for the leather carbon fiber seats. Wow. More carbon fiber, too. Carbon fiber, one. That's a lot of money for carbon fiber. So, about 15, 16 grand. And the other options, not so expensive, but total, wow. Almost 20 grand in goodies. And there's the total damage. Still cheaper than the German cars, though, with comparable horsepower. And though for that price, you do not get a spare tire, just a cheesy tire repair kit. They say this is a performance car, they do it to save weight, that's why you're paying all that money for the carbon fiber, but I think they're saving some money by not giving you a tire as well. That's why I brought my own tire repair kit. Lots of goodies in there for the emergencies. Air pumps, stop leak. And before I forget, in all my videos, we take the headlights out in the dark and do some night driving. We're going to do that at the end of the video, part three. So don't go away. Okay, this vehicle is available with a 10-speed automatic transmission or the 6-speed manual like we have here. Which one should you get? That hasn't really been covered by other YouTube videos. Most of them just say, yeah, dude, just get the six-speed. It's more fun. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good if you're going to keep the vehicle for a week like me. If you're going to live that thing for like three or four years, you might have to rethink. Here's the bottom line. The 10-speed automatic car is quicker. It's a better fuel economy and a lot easier to live with in daily driving. So if the six-speed manual is slower, uses more fuel and more clumsy to use, why would you want one? Ordinarily, people get a manual transmission to keep the revs up on the engine, get better performance, but you don't need to do that on this motor. In fact, it has so much torque in daily driving, I just shift directly from first to fifth by passing second, third, and fourth gears. Not an issue. Lots of pulling power here. In spite of this, over half of the pre-orders on Cadillacs specified they wanted the manual transmission. And I'll admit, it's just more fun to drive. No complaint there. And this is a very good gearbox, very smooth, precise shifts, and light clutch. One of the better ones on the market. And I suspect people who spend 100 grand for a Cadillac probably have other vehicles in their driveway for daily commuting. They're probably buying this as a weekend play toy. Take it out and burn a bit of rubber. It's a lot easier to do that in a manual than an automatic. More fun anyway. 
Here's the deal. If you want the manual, you'll be happy with this. Not an issue, but for daily commuting, this is going to be your only car. You might want to consider the 10-speed automatic. As always, the choice is yours. Below the six-speed shifter, we have rev matching, traction control button, and the mode button. It gives you snow ice mode, track mode, sport mode, tour mode, and my custom mode. Unless you press the V performance button, and the dash changes to the V mode gauge. With the tachometer you can read up top. A lot better than the dinky one you had on the bottom prior to this. And there's the V mode we have on the screen. And I lowered the steering. I'll explain that later on in the video. Steering feel, I should say. And on the opposite side of the V button, you have this switch. Performance traction. Race one, race two. Dry, wet, sport, all kinds of things you can pick from here. I could do a whole video on this, but we don't have the time. Some other goodies on here, like launch control, G forces, lap timer, your zero to 60 times. And the clarity of the camera system is very sharp. Looks better in person than on my cheap handheld camera, trust me. And the climate controls were easy to use. No need to read the owner's manual. Decent sized glove box. By the way, on top of the shifter, I don't know if this is real metal or not, but if you leave it out in the sun long enough, it'll burn your hand like metal. You might want to cover it up on a hot sunny day. Like so. And here's what those fancy leather carbon fiber seats look like. Very nice. Worth the six grand? Ah, well, I don't know what to say about that. People say, why you got plastic on these expensive seats? Uh, that's carbon fiber. What was it, another six grand on there? And there's room for two full-size adults back there, not three. And you have the drive shaft hump in the middle, taking up some room. And the sun visors do slide back and forth to keep the sun coming out the side windows. Some cars, you can't do that. Overall, this is a nice cabin, but make sure have to pay the price for it in dollars and cents. And look out for those wide rocker panels. A lot of dirt and debris builds up on here. Gets on your pants. You want to keep a rag handy and wipe it down often. Okay, enough show and tell. Let's go out and do some driving. The power steering can be adjusted for a light touring mode or heavy sport mode. The only difference between the two, from what I'm seeing, the sport mode it just makes it heavier to turn the wheel, and that's it. So driving on the freeway, sport mode's okay. If you're driving on corners, tight mountain roads, it is totally, totally unacceptable. All it does is wear your arms out. So unless you missed your workout at the gym, I would say for most driving, city or mountains, tight curves, just keep it in the touring mode. The CT5 has an excellent magnetic shock system that adjusts for touring, sport, or other driving conditions. A very nice system. I got it in touring mode right now. Let's take some speed humps and see what the ride's like. Here comes bump number one. Very smooth. Bump number two. Smooth again. And the big nasty one. Not much difference. Let's do that again, but we'll put it in the track mode. Beef up the shocks and the steering, which is now pretty stiff. Bump number one. Yeah, I felt that, but still reasonably comfortable. Number two. Again, stiff but comfortable, and the nasty bump. Yeah, I felt that one, but not too bad. 
Uh oh. Happy hour again. Oh, that doesn't look good. General Motors has done an excellent job of developing their Magnarite suspension over the years. Or should I say decades. The early systems were pretty mediocre, but the newer ones are excellent. Very well developed and worth the cost. Now, here we go, folks. Another self-driving car. Waymo, whatever they call them. A solution to a non-existent problem. One of the dumbest ideas I've ever seen for cars. They teach their own. I wonder what happens if I get in front and slam on my brakes. We're going to take a short, sedate highway trip. I'm trying to keep it under 80 miles per hour. See what type of fuel economy we get. Well, 25 miles, 68 miles per hour average, 23.3 mpg. But we got a lot of slow pokes in front. I'm going to have to pass them, so fuel economy is going to drop. This is my official figure for now. This car really is a cool highway cruiser, especially having the touring mode. Main race suspension is very comfortable. Great for long trips. If you stretch out that small 16 gallon fuel tank. The wind noise is surprisingly low. Cadillac did a great job of building a very sturdy body. Far better than some other GM vehicles I've driven. Overall, the Cadillac engineers did a great job on this vehicle. I was really going to try to keep my foot off the throttle and get good fuel economy figures, but too many slow pokes on the road today. I had to pass about 15 cars and open this baby up, and I think my fuel economy went right down the toilet. <laughs> well, we'll find out in a minute when I pull over. Well, 20.8 MPG, not bad considering all the passing I was doing. What was the EPA claim? 21, I believe. Well, let's see, the previous driver got a 0 to 60 time of 4.2 seconds. I don't know how to operate the computer. Let's just get our stopwatch. So I hit this donkey doing 90 miles an hour, and well, I didn't see him, but look at this. Not a dent on this Cadillac. That's some good, strong body work there. GM did a great job. Sorry, donkey. All right, before you animal rights activists send me hate mail, I didn't really hit the donkey. It was there long before I got there. Long before, trust me. All right, if you watch my videos, you know what's coming up next. We can't get on this road unless we stop and say hi to Freddy the Frog, because he gives you good luck. They get big out here. I hear it's the water. Must be the uranium plant down the road. Alright, let's go. We're now driving on Dead Man's Road. Tight corners, no guardrails, lots of rocks that fall on the pavement, as well as sand, cattle roaming around. Not smart to be if you're driving a poorly designed vehicle, but this is a properly designed vehicle with excellent handling, great brakes, and lots of power, so I think we'll be just fine. The Cadillac CT4 black wing we had with the supercharged V6 is slightly easier to drive on corners like this because of its lighter weight and better balance, but in the end, the CT5 black wing like this can hang in there. It just takes a bit more effort. A lot more weight on the front end. That's why I put the steering in touring mode. If you put it in sport mode, it just makes it heavier. After a while, it gives your arms a good workout. If you need a workout, I don't, so I put the steering in touring mode. 
seems to be just quick either way, so why punish yourself? All right, let's see. 557 miles, 15.9 gallons. That's 35 gallons times five bucks. It's around 175 bucks we spent on this baby. But hey, if you can afford the vehicle, you can afford the gas, right? I can't afford the vehicle. I'll just have to afford the gas. So what's my take on this Cadillac CT5 Blackwing after a week of driving? Personally, I've never been a fan of Cadillacs, but if they make good stuff like this, sign me up. This is an excellent piece of engineering. Well, worth the price. If you don't think so, price a European car with this much horsepower, so what you're paying about 50 grand more. This is an excellent machine and definitely worth the money. Thumbs up for me.